Okay. It's good. New York City, people around the world. Big conversation with Super C. It's gonna be a good, good episode today. I got my main man, my guy, Dave Shoe in the building. You know what I'm saying? We up at the Sky Box with Mr. Barber, you know what I'm saying? Real players in effect, you know what I mean? We're about to drop some flavor. We're about to give you some knowledge you ain't never knew and about to learn, you know what I mean? Dave Shoe, what's going on, boy? Ain't nothing, ain't that good. Looking right. good, man. That's right, coming out, coming out, get a haircut, talk to my man, big conversation with Super C. That's right. My man, real players in the house. Real players. All right, and Rich the Barber. Rich. Got yeah. the daughter Cinnamon. Hey, got, Cinnamon. Got, got, hey. got, got, got Super C son in the house. Junior. You know what I'm saying? Junior yeah. in the house. We're doing it real, real big. So, all right, before we start getting, digging in the crates, that's what I say, digging in the crates. In the crates. Right. Before we dig in the crates, what's happening next Friday, man? Next Friday, I'm doing something real at the, um... At the Coliseum up in New York, New York, at the Coliseum in White Plains, New York. That's 15 South Broadway. I just bought a couple of tickets from the club, man. Just want to show some love and about, give about 100 tickets from 100 of my friends to come out and enjoy themselves, man. That's all. So it's bad love. You're just showing love like that. Just giving out tickets. Usually, you know, people buying tickets for your big event. Hey, listen, listen, listen to me. Listen, June, July, we're going to be back on the mat. All right? But these are people that have supported me through the years, people that I care about. People that I love and their family to me. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna buy 100 tickets from the club and pass them out to my friends. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know what I mean? The give back. That's right. You know, you also you did a give back last year, September 6. Tell people about that. Well, what it is, man. People have supported the dynasty uh, throughout the years, and myself, Dave Shoe Entertainment, for the last 22, 23 years, man. And I think that you know when you give back to people, man. God just sends you a bunch of blessings and stuff like that. And I can say that I've truly been blessed over these years. I really haven't had uh, any mishaps, so to speak. And um, I think that it was time we were going through something. It's the pandemic and stuff like that. So, you know, what you want to do, you want to show people love. What you did, you took a lot of stress off of people because a lot of people was losing family relatives and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And there was nothing at the time. It was like people doing events. Yes, they were. But this event, which, you know, we put out a flyer, we promoted it. We went from about 1,000 people to about 3,000 or more out there that night. Yeah. And they, they actually stayed out there until about 9 o'clock. It was pitch black, and they were dancing out there. Yeah. You know, shout out to Brucey B. That's right. Mike C. DJ uh -huh. Hollywood. B. Fats. L.A. Love. L.A. Love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, Mike C. Mike C. and DJ Legend. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That was a hell of an event, you know what I mean? So are you doing something like that again? Well, we're going to make that, that was our first annual, we're going to make that an annual from now on. So every first week in September, we'll be there, and our hard willing we'll be there, we'll be going to give back to the people. People talking about this, like, you know, how everybody's going to Atlanta or Bronx Day, they're talking about Dynasty Day now. Yeah, well, that's something, you know, actually that you came up with, man. You know, you're a big part of the Dynasty and stuff like that. So that's something that's we're trying to put in effect, just when we do it, we got to do it right. Um, Look for my other partners, you know what I'm saying, to get their, their people in line because we, we all have individual people that we deal with. But that's a something that we're definitely looking forward to. Now, let's talk about Dave's shoe, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Where you originally from? I'm originally from Edenwall. Edenwall? Mm -hmm. Wow. How many years you uh? You from went? 1967 to 1986. Woo! All right. Now we're moving on, you know what I mean? Young. Flash, I'm hearing. Was they DJ. used to call me DJ Little Flash as a kid, yeah. Did you play music? I did, yeah. Who influenced you? Uh, DJ Breakout, uh, TNT Disco, that's Fat Time, from my block, I'm from 225th from Maconia, mm -hmm. that's Fat Time, and DJ Breakout from over there at Boston Road. The reason why I bring this conversation to you is because you're always getting on me about, you don't know that song, and you're always describing a label, mm -hmm. and what year it came out, and how to play it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we sit together, we hear DJs play records, they play it wrong. You say he did that wrong. Mm -hmm. He cut that too short yeah. or whatever. Well, 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 like I said, at that time, uh, it was TNT Disco. That's Tommy and Tony. Mm -hmm. And their DJs was DJ Gary G and DJ Siobhan, Siobhan, if I'm not mistaken. And then would break out because they were very close. Mm -hmm. And I lived on the block. They would call me Little David. And I was there. And so it would be break out and Baron. And um, what else they had? They had somebody else around at that time. We're talking about 1978, 1977. So I'm, I got to go all the way back. So, so who basically turned you out 
for you like to love this hip hop so much? Like, 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 was it you know besides breakout? Like when you first witnessed this hip hop thing, you know what I mean? Like, right. what turned you out? Like, oh, I want to be a part of that culture. I would say Flash. Flash. Every Flash. Yeah, every Flash. And where was that at? I heard Flash in Truman High School. He played in the gymnasium in Truman High School in 1970. 70, I would, I would say 79, 78. Mm -hmm. He played in there. And that, from that point on, I wanted to be part of that. Okay. Now, moving on up, you know what I'm saying? Now, we're going to talk about Dave Shoe getting into the party world. <laughs> All right? So, like, as a teenager, you just having fun, going out to parties and whatnot like that. Mm -hmm. What made you say, I'm going to do this on my own? And you're talking about DJing? Or no, you're talking I'm about talking about as far as like, want to do, what you was, I wouldn't even call you a promoter, you just want to do a party. Well, at that time, man, I wanted to do a party with time on Channel uh, 68. There was a show that came on, um, Bronx Network. no, the Bronx Network, it was uh, Entertainment Vibes with Sex Boogie. Oh, okay. A good friend of yours, Mark. Yes, yes. Right? And uh, I would see Gator and uh, Black and Gold, and that's something that I wanted wanted to do. But I was actually like a head before that, like like you know, like for instance, have you did like a, your own house party or something like before, like before? You... But it was influenced by watching them. Oh, so this wasn't in the teenage years you were doing. House I wasn't parties. doing house parties in no teenage years. As far as DJing, uh -huh. I'm out of DJ that before a house, house okay, party. Okay, okay, okay. So like you didn't that. get into the promotion until you got up in age. Until I got up in age, yes. Okay, okay. So you said that Gator Production and... Gator Production and Black and Gold. Black they influenced me. I watched them on Channel 68, Entertainment Vibes, and I said that was something that I wanted to do. Right. Um, and the first the first time that I tried that, I did a house party. Right. Over here on White Plains Road. I did a house party. Uh, I did two house parties, mm -hmm. and at that time, Frank the Cameraman was my DJ. Yeah? Oh, yeah, that's my man. Shout out to Frank the Cameraman. That's my guy. Yeah, that was you my know DJ. What so you, you went from the house parties and you moved on to the community room? I started doing the community center on down there in uh, Wexler, in Webb, down there with the Hudson, what's it called, the Hudson something on the corner, 160 something street. Okay, well, about the 41 bucks. About the 41 bucks. And at that time, I had a uh, plate for me. I had Hollywood, DJ Breakout, DJ Hollywood, um, DJ Dr. Dust, good friend of mine, and they played music for me. And that and that and that's what one of my first beginnings. Okay, so when you first started doing your, your parties, mm -hmm. what was your your alias name? Was it Dave Shoe? It was Dave Shoe because that man that's cutting your hair right there gave me that name. Oh, he gave you gave him the name. I gave him the name. I was fair. Tell me that story real quick. It's awful argument. What's the argument? Argument. Him oh, and I. Bad. Him and I was always, and I'm not saying competition, but. Uh, I wear a lot of sneakers. Right. In the Adidas, the Pumas. I think he wasn't in there yet, but it was Adidas and the Pumas. Right. And I was there. Mm -hmm. He's coming to my barber shop. I had a name, Will the Real. He comes in and said, You always got on some sneakers. I said, Listen, man, I can wear shoes whenever I want. Right. I had a little shoe game. Mm -hmm. So one day I was wearing a fly yeah, up here, up here, lizards. Right. Fly and choice. back in those days, back in the, the color was yellow. Right. And I was lying. Right? So, me and him started arguing. You got no shoe game. Yeah. We ain't got no shoe game. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I got shoe game. One day he came in there and he saw me with the shoe game. I said, listen, you need a stage name. You and I are always arguing about shoes. Mm -hmm. Why can't we, do you have a stage name? He's like, mm. I said, what you mean? Dave Shoe. Take the E off of Dave. D-A-V. Shoes. A S. H O O with the hyphen of a shoe. Right. Over it. Sure did. Right? And then I also mentioned someone that was in the industry long time ago. Okay. Uh, by the name of Peter Shoe. He didn't know him at the time. Didn't know him at the time. So we want no problems with naming his name after him. It was just the shoe. Right. Right? You can spell someone's name differently. So that's how he got his name. For me, one day cutting in the barbershop, me and him arguing right. over a pair of shoes that he likes to use a lot. Right. I was wearing sneakers. Hold on a minute. Let me see. Still alive. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure. I'm making sure, guys. Yeah, so, I'll cut you, please. Cut that out. Yes, um, this is what? Oh. A wrong cut? All right, so that's how we 
we we became he became they shoot. Okay. So right. after he did that, he ran with it and came back to me and said, Rich man, thank you very much. I appreciate that name that you gave me. And up to this day, that's all he wear. You rarely see him, you rarely see him with those on his feet. You rarely see him with those on his feet. Dress like you know, you don't wear he always wearing shoes. So let me ask you a question. So you gave the name Dave Shoe. Did you ever think that it might cause conflict with the next no. promoter name, Peter Shoe? No, no, not at all. Because did you did you think that you was gonna have conflict? It ain't spelled the same. It ain't spelled the same. Right. And he never created himself to be any part but of the entity. So of when, him. when he gave when he said you should use that name, mm -hmm. how do you feel about it at the time? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, taking that as your, your AKA name. Well, I didn't know who this dude was. When when I later found out about him, right. Um, I was already, I already had the name. What I want to say to you is, is this, is that I, you know, I was lost in the sauce for about 10 years. And that's the height of his, whatever he was into in the street. And then when he was doing his parties and stuff like that, to my knowledge. I'm from Edenmore. That name never came up town. No, dis no disrespect to him. He, he, he might have been doing his thing, but I never heard of him. Right. And like I said, from 19... 85 to 1994, I was lost in the source. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I've never heard of this guy. That, you know, if, if you want to collaborate, what, what do you mean lost in the source? Like, what do you mean? I was in the dunya. I was in the world. I was doing a lot of different things. Uh, uh, Speak on it, brother. Speak I was on doing it. a lot of different things. You know, I was getting high at that time. So I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. I never, I didn't hear of him until I got the name and then people would say, are you related to Pete? I said, no, I'm not related to Pete. I didn't even know what he looked like. Somebody had to show me a picture of him. And once they showed me a picture of him and they elaborated that he was a black Chinese and stuff like that, I said, oh, a lot of people that are in his age bracket that hustled around the time that he was hustling, um, I know, I have, I'm have, i personal friends with him. Right. A lot of them would say, damn, you act like him. Because I never knew about no sequence jackets and all that kind of shit. I'm from the 80s. I'm 54 years old. And that was, uh, at that time, you know, what you see today with the young boys dress, we didn't dress like that. Anybody, even when they were young, uh, like I said, I was I was, I was, was selling drugs at a, at a young, young age before I got messed up. So I'm trying to dress like the older dudes. Okay. So if I did have on a pair of sneakers, I might have had, had on a pair of shark skin pants with a pair of Pumas on and a, and a, and a mot neck. You understand what I'm trying to say? Right, right. So I never, I never... Um, this this gentleman here, which I've come to find out that he's a he's a good guy because I know some people that know him, and they say you kind of act like him, you know. I I I never tried to emulate him because I didn't know who he was. Okay. I was just doing how I do, how I dress. Well, first of all, I want to applaud you, right? At first, because you said you was lost in the source. Yes, sir. Now you become this big time street promoter. Uh. Like a P. Diddy status in the streets to some people, mm -hmm. and um, how did you break that demon? Well, I, it's, it's a law. It's God. That's that's who helped me. That's the only person I could say who helped me is God. Having the willpower, knowing that my grandparents didn't raise me to be no bum, but that's who raised me. My mother and father, they succumbed to the streets. They were, you know, they were both heroin addicts at that time. So my grandparents raised me, and um. Like I, when that thing came out, I got, you know, before that I would get money. And then when the crack came out, I got fucked up. Like so many other people did. Right. Even though they say they didn't. Some people didn't uh, have to go. I went to the rooms of Codex Anonymous to make meetings. I still make meetings 26 years later. Um, wow. And, um, you know, it's God. I, I, I truly, I, 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 I thank God for bringing me to a 12-step pro, program that takes care of myself and my family. You're healthy. You're looking good. Skin is clean. You know what I mean? I like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of brothers that went that route never came back. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure did. And a lot of them died. You know, and and we gotta applaud you because Thank you me. beat that demon. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you became Dave Shoot. Yes. And uh, we we need more leaders like that. You know, because there's a, like you know a lot of our leaders that that we look up to today was fucked up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, you can't be on a high horse looking down at somebody like your lifestyle is better because 
A lot of people in their households, they got family members that was messed up, mothers and dads that was messed up. And some people just flip that shit and then they living good. They eating good and, and, and they, they prosper. Well, see, what happens is it takes two minutes to forget where you were 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. It takes two minutes to forget to look down on somebody and think you're better than someone. Homie, you just got today. You could go right back to that shit if you forget all the pain that it caused in your life. Right. And I always keep that up front. A lot of times people ask me, um, how do you do parties? How do you be around all this champagne, all this liquor without drinking? I know that I have a primary purpose. My primary purpose, I'm here to make money, to have people to have fun, and I'm going home. Bro. I'm not touching that. Yeah, people believe in you, man, because you bring thousands of people out to the function. And not only that, you bring thousands of people out, you give people a fair opportunity to make money with make some bread, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, what made you just open your heart up and say, Look, listen, you know, you want to make money? I want to make money. Let's do this. How, how do you influence these people to come aboard to a day with you or a fantasy event? Well, the, the, the fact of the matter is, I told you, and he could, I grew up with this man. So prior to me getting messed up on drugs, I used to sell drugs. So I know I never disrespected, at that time I was selling heroin, the crackers are moved back. Uh, I never disres disrespected anybody on drugs. I know that if I take care of this dude, that he's going to bring me some more customers. Right. See, and that's where people get it messed up at. These people, let's flip the script now, up to present time, we're doing parties. Right. It's hard to sell tickets. Right. So, quite frankently, all right, I'm going to give a dude, if a dude, if a ticket is $25, I'm going to give a dude $10 off the ticket and you give me back $25. It's no different than what I used to do as a kid. As a kid, it was a 60-40 split. Older mm -hmm. nigga give me some work, I take $100 worth of work, mm -hmm. I take uh, $40 and give him back the $60. It's no different. Mm -hmm. All right? And so that's what I always kept in my mind. Right. People want to make money. Right. Right? Check this out. You got people that have regular jobs that hustle for me, right? right. They don't really need that $10. But they do it because I treat them a certain kind of way, man. And that's and that's what you have to do. You have to respect all people, all right. And that's where people sometimes get it confused that because they don't respect the, their brother, their fellow sister, or right. their fellow brother. And that's and that's a no. Man, I heard a big story. You know what I'm saying? Man, you got to tell me the story. I wasn't with you at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm hearing that uh, you was being no disrespect, an asshole. Said that the uh, the club owner. <laughs> Wanted you to bring down some paper or something, and you was trying tell, to cause his bluff. Let me tell the story. Let me tell the story. I mean, let me just finish. You was causing his bluff or whatever, trying to fuck with his bluff. But the main thing out of all was that I want to know how you get those charter buses outside the event or whatever they can to pick up those people to take them to another event. Uh, that's two different stories. That's two different stories? That's two okay. different stories. All right, so tell me what happened. I'm going to tell you that story about the charter bus. Okay. Uh, God bless the dead, it was a promoter by the name of Gene Pendergrass. Gene Pendergrass got me, um, it was called the Empire. It was down 30-something street. That was a, 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 it was a restaurant owned by some Chinese. They closed their doors. They got shut down. Well, they told me a week prior to the event. So now I got all these people rocking for me, getting money for me. I can't get these, because black people, they like to panic. Right. Right? So I can't tell these people right away. Well, my grandfather, I get that from my grandfather as well. My grandfather used to do a lot of bus rides and stuff. I said, Daddy, give me a, a number to a bus company. So I chartered about five or six buses to take the people, um, to pick them up from the Orient and take them down to um, the American Park Cafe. Woo. Now, each, each, each seat had a bottle of champagne on. Woo. And it had the TV on the bus, so I sent them downtown, and, <laughs> and I cleared that up real quick. Because, uh -huh. you know, black people panic. They like to panic. Right. And they like to spit false rumors. And so I, that, that was a good one. God looked out for me on that. And I got to send everybody downtown. Everybody had a good time. So um, you had five or six buses? I had five or six buses. I mean, and champagne in each, each bus in the, in the East Sea. In the East Sea, yeah. I didn't say I didn't say my wet, but I had some champagne in the East Okay, that's, that's even right. cool. They get a little buzz off of it. Mm. Yeah, so that was some. Even your brother Daryl Hicks called me up. He said, that's a big one, brother. I don't know if I would have did that. And you know you can say that because you called me and told me that. Wow. Uh, shout out to Daryl Hicks. That's my man. Uh, the second incident you're talking about, it was Mars 2112. I was I could tell the story today. Okay. I couldn't tell that story back then. Um, 
I was doing a party for Feds Magazine. So March 21, 12, said, Mr. Shu, we need you to bar guarantee was $15,000 at that time. We need you to come with $7,500 in cash. I said, listen, and that's what I got. I got a case of the big head. I was doing the Roxy's and all that. I said, listen, y'all niggas call me to do this party. I'm going to get there with that money when I can get there. Make a long story short, they said, Mr. Shu, if you're not here by 7 o'clock with that $7,500, we're going to shut this party down. So now, I'm thinking they bluffing. Because I, when I do a party, that makes the ball a whole lot of money. I'm thinking they lying. Mm -hmm. 7 o'clock hit. They called me. They said, listen, brother, we asked you to be down here at 7 o'clock. And you're not here. The party is canceled. I immediately started crying. Right? Because I thought they were, I, I thought I was going to call their bluff. So that's what happened with that Feds Magazine party. I got a case of the big heads. The the club called my bluff, and that's why the party didn't go on. Wow. And I also heard that she was the king of the Fridays. I had I, March 21, 12, I had a, the, it'd be Friday night, always on my birthday. I would do my birthday on a Friday night, and I've had the club, I've had the line wrapped around 50th Street, going all the way down to 51st Street. Ooh, and some of the clubs that you uh, tore down. March 21, 12, Roxy, Lundy, Supper Club, uh, that thing that Floss had, the Panage, um, shit, I got it, it's a whole list of them, um, the Metrodome, um, Copacabana, Copacabana, there's so much, so many goddamn clubs over the last 20 something years, man, uh, so I got it on one of the pages, or list of them. What's the, what's the difference now between, like, 10 years ago, as you did your vets and now. Like what do you see different now and what people are doing now? A lot of people are going to these little lounges. Yeah. You know, and um some and I'm not knocking it. Right. Some people um they prefer to be in a smaller, uh intimate setting. Mm -hmm. I don't like bars. Like I said, when I was a kid, I was into a whole lot of things, and I've seen a lot of people get killed in the bars. So I don't like being really in a bar. Uh, nothing against an intimate setting, but I don't like real enclosed spaces where I can't see two exits, one in the front and one in the back. So um, that's that's my reason. But they, they do that. A lot of the, the guys do those small bars and stuff like that, but I'm not interested. I can't make any money like that. A lot of people get upset because they say you don't do as you are parties. Why is that? When you say as you are, like what? Come, come, you come as you are. Yes. Well, I'm a, I'm, like I said, yeah. the, era, the era that I come from, uh, we got dressed. That's what we did. Even, listen, all the young, all of us got dressed to go out. But why Why you don't allow people to come as you are? Because there's some promoters that have some of the biggest crowds and being the, the, the sexiest events. Mm -hmm. You turn around, Timberlands. Hockey jersey on or something. What makes you stand out and say, I'm not I'm not doing that? Why me why you did this? I don't want listen, I'ma say this to you. I have done events because you have to understand nowadays, um, I wanna put it the right way without offending anybody. And if it does offend anybody, I don't mean to offend anybody. Um I have had events and I do have events where it's it's mixed. Some people like to dress, some people don't. Um, I can't understand why you wouldn't want to be dressed at 40 something years old, 50 something years old, but they don't, some people don't like to be dressed. All right, so today's times are changing rather than before. I think a lot of, um, a lot of people, if they had a crowd that had to get dressed, they wouldn't have that amount of people at their party. That's what I believe. Truly. A lot of times, people don't want to put on slacks and shoes. And I can understand it. The times, again, they're changing. The times have changed. Right. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's basically, you know, I feel people should have a mindset of saying, look, we're going out, we're going downtown, we're not going to a lounge. The lounge, we go as you are. Right. But I see people got it twisted. They want to come downtown, dress as a hoodlum or whatever, and they want to go to the lounge, Red bottoms on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They want to be fancy. Mm -hmm. They mixed up in the mind to me. You're like, well, I mean, 
I mean, I can I, I can kind of say is that, you know what, man, uh, we're going to have to bend a little bit. You're going to have to bend a little bit. So you mean to tell me that if I got on $2,000 shoes and a $2,000 outfit, and I turn around and do got a square hood dancing with a bottle of champagne, and I'm supposed to accept that? I'm, not coming, to, I'm, I'm not, not coming back? You're not coming to my party. Okay, great. Great, because, you know, you got a lot of people, because people dress up, a lot of young people who are afraid to dress up say, oh, those are those, those old niggas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. What do you think about that? When people classify your group of people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 listen, oh, oh me, oh me, listen to this. Dumb same people, because I've heard of them rumors before, dumb same people are the same age in me. Check this out. Switch, switch. Check this out. Mm -hmm. If you if you're a uh, if, if, if if you're a 40 year old man or a 45 year old man, you're a middle aged man. Right. So I mean, people get this whole thing twisted about uh, Dave shoe parties. Old. The reason why people come to my parties because we have a variety of all ages in our party. That's the truth. You're gonna see somebody in their 30s. You're gonna see somebody in their 40s. You're gonna see somebody in their 50s. You're gonna even see somebody in their 60s. That's how we go. All right? And you want to see somebody in their late 20s in our parties. Because we have a variety of DJs. We have Super C. We got Smooth Ski playing sometimes. We got L.A. Love playing sometimes. We got Bucci B playing sometimes. We got Mike B playing sometimes. We got DJ Ledger playing sometimes. Listen, we have... We, Mike C. Mike C. Man, we attract all ages of people in the Dave Shoe events. So when people talk about our parties, man, that's because that's another person who's a hater. Kicking some dirt. That's all. That's How about. many years in the party business now? Maybe 23 years. I haven't caught it. So whatever, whatever, whatever. 1996 is until now. That's it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What's the worst thing you ever did as a promoter? Meaning? Meaning, like you did something you said I would never do. Like, like uh, oh. written the area, maybe uh, doing business with somebody or uh, doing an event uh, that went bad, like a, a theme. Uh, never, never put my trust in one person. Just give my phone. Yeah. Give my phone. Eagle, sir. Thank you. All right. Never, never put my trust in one, one. Oh, you had a bad experience with one person? Yeah, I had a bad experience thinking that, uh, this person was very popular at the time. I gave him about 200, 300 tickets, and I thought he could bring those amount of people out. And then at the, the day before the party, he gave me back 290 tickets. <laughs> my God. So, so I would never put my trust in, in one individual ever again. Any, any uh, other collabs besides Fez magazine? Mm -hmm. I did something with Don Diva magazine. Um, I've done things with other promoters. I, you know, I, as long as the money's right, I'm willing to do anything with anybody. Who was one promoter you wanted to work with? That I wanted to work with? Yeah. I wanted to work with Dwayne Francis. Oh yeah. Wayne Francis and 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 uh, Dow Hicks and, and Mike Green, Black and Gold. Right, Those right. are some of the people that I would really, really have liked to work with. Uh, but again, there's no place that can hold my crowd in their crowd. Right. Yeah, bring out New York City. Yeah, I think the only thing that we would probably be able to do would be MetLife. MetLife. Right. Anything you like to say to the young promoters that's coming up now? And and, and when this when the pandemic opens, I mean when the pandemic is open when the pandemic is over and everything opens up. And you I already know that you already got something in the making of it. You know what I'm saying? You know what the bird told me, but at the end of the day, what would you tell the upcoming promoters when these clubs open? How they how they should look at things from this point on? Well things are gonna be different, man. I think some things are gonna be Mandatory. I'm hoping that that shot is not mandatory, but I believe it might might be mandatory uh, to have to go in these clubs now. Um, I would just tell the young promoters, stay in your grizzly, stay in your blind. I mean, if Dwayne, Dwayne Francis was alive, um, and Dow Hicks and Mike Green could tell you when I first started, I used to go to them and say, can I buy your mailing list? And they would laugh at me. <laughs> you know? And look, I didn't understand it then. But that's your Bible. Your people are your heart of your, the heart of your promotion. Right. So, so now I understand it. I was mad at them then, but I understand now as, as a promoter season in the game, man. I learned a lot from watching Daryl Hicks, Mike Green, and um, Dwayne Francis. 
I learned a lot from him, man. So, you know. Speaking I, of speaking of crews, who's part of the Niners? Well, my crew is. Oh, I, when, when I say my crew is because we're a team together. My crew is Mike B, D Papers, and Al Pino, and D Rob when he was alive. I mean, when he was around, because well, his job took him further on, so he's no longer in the dynasty at this particular time, but he will always be a dynasty brother. Right. And our and our brother who went on uh, to the essence, Kenny Dinkins. He was part of the dynasty. Wow. What year you started uh, at um, Stage 48? Stage 48, yes. Six years. The going on, oh, this year made seven years, seven years ago. And the last party at Stage 48 was in March, you at Kid Capri. Yeah, at Kid Capri for my birthday. Wow. He tore it down. What made you want to just focus on that? You had uh, not only Kick Capri at for Master Flex, but what made you uh, pick Kick Capri for your birthday? He bring out that flavor, man. So so does so does Red. I mean, so does so does so does Flex. But I had Flex a prior birthday, and he brought the flavor. But when Kid get on, man, he bring that flavor, brother. Mm -hmm. He bring that flavor. He bring out that hustling, that hustling, that real hustling crowd. The people from my era, he brings them out. Okay. Okay. You also had Love Bug Starsky. Oh, that was years ago. That was at the uh, 129th. Uh -huh. Yeah, 129th and Madison Avenue at the All Saints. I had him. Right, right. You work with uh, the world famous Brucey B as well. That's my man. That's right. Okay. Rooftop King. He definitely is. He definitely is. Uh, rest in peace to Stan Strong. I, how was that relationship with you and Stan Strong? Stan has a. Um, Don't get cried on me now, man. That's a real sensitive situation. But you know, let's speak briefly about him real quick, you know. Stan has a daughter by my cousin Monique. And me and Stan became very close. He, even though he was younger than me, he was a mentor to me. Uh, and um, he always gave me good advice, man. And he and he was a foreseer. That said that Sagittarius sign is a very smart sign. He's a day before my wife. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Rest in peace to stay strong, you know. Uh, so as a promoter now in 2021, this birthday party coming up, everybody's calling you for tickets, and, and, and you're letting them know that it's not. This is not a day of sure event. It's not a day of sure event. It's not a day of sure event. I brought 100 tickets from from the club to pass out to my friends, personal friends of mine, people who sell tickets for me, people who have supported me over the years, and I just gave them out so they can come and be with me on my birthday. Wow. So there you have it, you know what I'm saying? Dave Shoe, big conversation with DJ one, 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 one thing I need to say. Okay. I want to give a special rest in peace to one of the Dynasty brothers that just passed, Harlem Cujo. Rest in peace, Harlem Cujo. And also, uh, Let's give a, 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 a happy belated birthday to Kevin Shaw. He's one of your mentors as well. Yes, he is, man. Kevin Shaw, when I when I could say to you that Kevin Shaw was one of the most realest brothers that I've ever met. Um, check this out. One thing about him, if he didn't like you, he didn't deal with you. Right. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't, listen to me. He's not that type of dude. He's not a phony dude. A lot of these dudes in the industry, uh, they got a little phonyism with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But check this out. If you don't like me, there's no reason to say it. It's not, listen, we got to respect one another, right, mm -hmm. as men. But we don't have to do no business, and we ain't even got to talk to one another. And that's one of the things I respect about Kevin Shaw. What was one of the big highlights you did with Kevin Shaw before uh, you get out of here? The two, the, two, uh, the two biggest yacht in New York, the Cornucopia Majesty, I did two years with him in a row. Will you let New York City know how much that boat costs? 50000 And you haven't that boat? Kevin. I was a worker. He was a worker? I was a worker. Oh, so, oh, okay. Kevin's my man. Listen, I ain't no front in me. Okay. Kevin's my man, and he did me right, and I helped him out in his times, his time of need, that, that right before he passed. His son had an unfortunate uh, death, and, and, you know, and, you know, a lot of things wasn't right with Kevin, so I, uh, he asked me to help him, and we turned that boat out. Definitely turned did. That boat out. Definitely did. Are you planning to do it again? Um, I ain't got fifty thousand, <laughs> uh, but but I'm gonna do something a little smaller. August, the last Saturday in August, I have a boat. 
Okay. I have a boy. I have a yacht. I have a yacht. Mm. All right. You know, and with that fifty thousand, uh, the boat cost fifty thousand when Kevin did it because he brought the bar out. He brought the whole boat. Most dudes ain't doing that. Right. His bar. That means his door, his tickets, and his bar. That's what that means. Fifty thousand. A lot of people ain't doing that. That when you want to talk about a hustler, that's what you hustle. Was other people hustling for him? Of course. Besides you? Of course, it's not my business to say who the, what their names are. I'm gonna tell you, I was a worker. Okay. You know, but you know, the front in your game, right? Ain't no front, brother. Ain't, ain't never been. So when I hear certain people talk certain things, you go about what you don't know me personally, homie. If you knew me, you know ain't no front in my game, and I'm liable to say anything out my mouth. The truth. Not a lie, and you, get, and you, you know who I'm talking to, you're getting a lot of lies from a lot of different people, brother. Ain't no fun. Get to know me, and maybe one day we can do business. Now, if people want to reach you for tickets or be a part of your function, how can they reach you? Reach me at 347-865-1480. That's 347-865-1480. That's the Dave Shoe Entertainment. Um, come, come aboard, come get some money. And our team in the dynasty... There's no big I's and there's no little U's and there's no I and team. Everything is a team here. Check this out. The people who sell tickets for all of us, they part of our team. Exactly. Right? I don't even want to use the word worker. I think that's a derogatory thing. Right? Mm -hmm. There are people that help us in our business and help create a good atmosphere and a good party. Come on board. Call Mike C. Call E. Papers. Call Al Pino. Either one of us. We're going to treat you right. There you go. Big conversations with Super C. You know what I'm saying? Real players in effect. We in the skybox over here on Holland Avenue, baby. And we'll see you next time. Peace.